Hi, my name is David. I'm a penetration tester at Securing. And today we'll talk about mobile crypto wallet security. Enjoy. Obviously, talking about crypto wallet applications, we'll have to compare it to the banking applications. Let's quickly look at differences between wallet app and banking application. In case of wallet, you are in full control of your funds, but there is no support if something goes wrong. Second factors are not server side, which means no protection if private key gets leaked or fished. Can private key be stolen? It is possible if the device is compromised and the key is not stored properly. What do I mean by saying properly stored? iOS applications should store its secrets inside the keychain, where all keys are encrypted. Normally, rest of the files and informations can be stored inside the application sandbox. As the Apple definition says, App Sandbox provides protection to system resources and user data by limiting your app's access to resources requested through entitlement. What it means is that one application cannot simply read files of the other application unless there is a system vulnerability. Knowing that, I just had to look at a few apps and see how they implemented it. I've downloaded around 10 apps and it didn't take long. The second wallet app that appears after searching Solana in App Store had exactly this issue. It stored private key outside keychain in simple database file in the sandbox. There's one more thing that we have to bear in mind that not only the private key is the thing that we have to protect, but also the mnemonics that are used to generate this private key. Many of the developers really did their homework here, and most of the applications that I've checked had big splash screen informing users about the consequences of sharing and losing private key. Some descriptions were better than the other, but some had some silly issues. Look here! Big splash screen, a lot of information. This is how we do it. This is the same application. Right to the private key is a copy button. See that there is also an information to record offline by hand. This is how big oopsie might look like. You copy your private key, want to store it in some safe place. You switch between the apps and immediately see that some other app copied your clipboard. Allowing to copy private key or mnemonics was quite a common issue, but there was one application that went a step further. They were verifying whether you screenshot private key or mnemonics. But there was a button to export private key and it was exported as a QR code. And when you press the button, it was saving this QR code in your photo gallery. Does that make sense? Quick threat modeling reveals another problem. What if someone knows passcode to your phone? It may be someone from your family or some stranger at the bus who saw your passcode and pickpocket your phone. How does the application protect itself? How potential attacker can access your funds? After opening the application, they may click random buttons trying to brute force the passcode. If it's something simple like 111, they may easily get access. If there is no passcode, there is no protection. So we should ensure that application does not allow user to set simple passcode or at least inform about consequences. But there have to be a simpler way, right? What if attacker abuses biometric functionality? Application should verify whether biometric settings has been changed. How does the attack look in reality? First, attacker obtains your device passcode and gets access to your phone. In this case, app uses biometric verification instead of passcode. The attacker adds their fingerprint in settings and by that, get access to your wallet. In this scenario, application should verify whether biometric settings have been changed, disable biometric authentication, and request a passcode. This trick worked even on a big boys like high-budget phantom wallet. After obtaining system passcode, you could disable biometric settings on your phone and therefore disable any protection in the application because the application did not have any passcode protection. 
During the app development process, banks have to follow strict rules regarding protection of user privacy and their funds. Every feature has to be implemented with great care and verified multiple times before being released to the public. Crypto wallets, on the other hand, can be made by anyone. And that means that best security practices are not always in place. Because wallets should ultimately be treated like a banking application. They should also include quality of life features like hiding balance and jailbreak verification to inform the user about the potential risk. One last sin of wallets is trackers. It is really important to verify that data sent to other companies does not contain the private key. That concludes our video. Hope you like it and see you next time.